is SLOOP332 a peptide? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what it is and why it's often lumped into this term peptide, even though technically the way it's been modified, it's a small molecule. But I'll show you some of the genes it works on and why it might be one of the biggest breakthroughs that we'll see in the next decade as benefits of exercise, the benefits of muscle protection, the benefits of mitochondrial and energy expenditure all improve in the uh, early studies on SLOOP332. In this video, by the end of it, you'll know exactly what it is, what pathways it works on, and ideally you'll be able to know if you have a pet mouse, this one will help your pet mouse run farther than any other molecule or peptide I've ever seen. All right, so let's jump into the science. I'm Reagan Archibald, founder of Ageless Future. I make these videos because I want you to have unreasonable health at any age. And I believe health is contagious. The more we focus on our health, the better we perform in life, the better we feel, the better we look, and other people take note and you can help other people. So SLOOP332, it is often referred to as a peptide. And so let's just dive into the mechanics of it. What it is, is if you think of a peptide, a peptide is just a gentle knock on the door. It's a nudge for your cells to start expressing different genes. And these peptides go in and they just gently remind your body how to function at its peak level. And that's been my goal for my own health pursuits and a lot of these stories and a lot of the insights that I share with peptides, I've experienced these myself. Sloop is no different. I used it about three years ago when I first learned about it, I was so excited. I was able to get my hands on some and I noticed it made a big improvement in my endurance. Now we know more of the technicalities around it, but these peptides are just single amino acid structures and you splice these together. If the amino acid structures get to be about above 40 to 45 amino acid chains in length, then they're classified as either a biologic agent and then if you get even longer, it's a protein. So these are just small, incomplete protein structures that turn on genes in your body. The shape has an energetic expression and SLUP or SLUPP332 is described as a short to medium length peptide structure. And this amino acid arrangement is about 10 to 30 amino acids. And these modifications, what they discovered out of St. Louis University, they're looking for a molecule that would bind on this estrogen related receptor. And they found that if they could activate this ERR pathway, they could get some of the same benefits in a gene expression that you get after you exercise. And so what they did is they modified these amino acids so it would bind specifically to this ERR pathway, ERR alpha. And what they found is the modification of it is what classified it as a small molecule. But having these peptides structured together, it functions very similar to a peptide. It's got a very short half-life. It initiates cell signaling, which all peptides are. The new medicine is signaling medicine and peptides are the signaling properties, stem cells, peptides, exosomes, all signaling. And that's all we're doing is increasing and completing the communication of the body. And what SLOOP does is a key and lock mechanism, similar to you've heard BPC-157 described as like the master key that opens up so many different receptors. Well, SLUPP does seem to be that master lock. And when master key unlocks that ERR alpha pathway, that's when the body gets so many benefits. It does have peptide-like bonds and behaviors in target engagement and cellular pharmacology. One of the things we know is peptides are structurally and functionally related, but it's technically called a small molecule. So what does this peptide do and why should we even be excited about it? Well, one of the things that, that we found is it can be an anti-aging molecule. The reason it can be anti-aging is because it turns off two of the major inflammatory molecules that drive aging, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and IL-6. It's cardioprotective. So one thing we found is it improves your heart contractility. We've also seen it, at least in the animal models, that it helps with cardiac apoptosis and fibrosis. It enhances your heart's ability to repair itself after a cardiac event. Now imagine if you had SLOOP332, 
It's activating this estrogen-related receptor. It's triggering fatty acid oxidation, so your body now can use fat as an energy source. But then the other thing it does is it activates the satellite cells in your muscles. So when you activate the satellite cells in your muscles, now you have better slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. You have better energy production inside of the muscles. And this is why you see blood sugar start to stabilize because it's using that as an energy source, using the sugar and the glucose as an energy source versus just having that glucose circulate around your body and just end up in a fat cell. The fact that it also helps as an exercise mimicry, one of the ways that it does that is by expressing hundreds of exercise-related genes, which I think is fascinating because this ERR alpha or estrogen-related receptor alpha, when you turn this on, now you're going to get better contractility in the muscles, so you'll see better endurance. And one of the most impressive things is if you're trying to increase your VO2 max, you'll see a dramatic improvement. So I always have challenges I give myself. Every year I have a new goal. So not my last birthday, but two birthdays ago, I said, I wanna get my VO2 max in the elite level. What do I need to do? And so I studied the exercise, like zone two was part of my training. And I think that may have helped marginally, but then I got turned on Norwegian four by four. Essentially a Norwegian four by four is where you get your body warmed up eight to 10 minutes and you go four minutes as hard as you can go. And then you come down to let your heart rate get to like zone two for four minutes and then four minutes as hard as you go. And you do that four times. So it's a 32 minute workout. I used uh, Sloop 332 for that ERR alpha pathway and for these mitochondrial biogenesis, the fact that it works on the PGC1 alpha pathway as well. I said, all right, let's try Sloop. And this was my own research project. Do not repeat anything that I'm doing before you work with your doctor on this. Once again, Sloop, we still need a lot more human data on it. The other thing I added was uh, Mod SC, which is another peptide that does have very interesting results as far as it being a myostatin inhibitor. So you get better folostatin improvements. You also get more AMPK. And then SS31. SS31 is FDA approved. This peptide is FDA approved for a mitochondrial disease called Barth syndrome. But I use these three peptides with BPC, thymosin beta-4, and then I was on cycles of reditrutide. And I was able to increase my VO2 max when I started at the beginning of the year, it was roughly 46. And when I finished, I got it up to 55 and uh, made a dramatic improvement in my overall endurance. So if you're thinking about, you know, is Sloop a peptide? Well, it does function like a peptide. It's amino acid chains, but the way that it's condensed into a small molecule, so it selectively targets that ER alpha pathway. It does happen to fall into the small molecule category. Does it have dramatic benefits? I think so. What's the risk profile on it? We don't know this yet. So once again, stay tuned. We'll keep you informed on the latest research, the latest medical innovations. If you want to go deeper, go to agelessfuture.com. Get your blood labs ran with my team and I, and let's figure out where your health can go um, based on the data. I'm Reagan Archibald. I'll see you on the next show.